Hey everyone, welcome back to Data Science Scene. In this video today, I'll be telling you about a new model called Helix. So Helix is a vision language action model for generalist humanoid control. So I'll be telling you all about this model, so stay tuned until the end so that you don't miss any information regarding it. So let's get right into it. And scrolling down here, the company figure is introducing Helix. Now Helix is a generalist vision language action model. Means there's vision in it. Of course, they're having the perception thing, so that is the vision. They have language, means language understanding. They will understand the language. This model understands the language. And learned control, means it will do the action to overcome multiple long-standing challenges in robotics. So there is like many challenges in robotics. So now Helix is a series of firsts. Now first, what Helix does. So this model Helix is added to the robots of Figure. So Figure Robotics is a company. So they added this model called Helix. Now due to this model called Helix, it has full upper body control. Now Helix is the first VLA, means Vision Language Action model is called VLA. Now what it would do, it would output high rate continuous control of the entire humanoid upper body including wrist, torso, head and individual fingers. Now if we have a look here to the robots, so the upper part of the body, now they have full control over it. Means they can move their head, they can move the individual fingers, the chest, the torso, the wrist. You can see they're moving it. So that thing is done due to this model called Helix, which is the AI model. Second thing is multi-robot collaboration. Now Helix is the first VLA to operate simultaneously on two robots. Means two robots can work together. So there's multi-robot collaboration. Now what it will do, it will enable them to solve a shared long horizon manipulation task with items they have never seen before. Now the item that will be given to them, they have not seen them before and they'll be even sometimes they'll be doing it together. Number three is pick up anything. Now figure robots which are equipped with Helix means this model. They can now pick up virtually any small household object including thousands of items they have never encountered before simply by following natural language prompts. So it means that the figure robots who are equipped with Helix means with this model they're equipped with it. They can now pick up any objects including those objects also that they have never seen before or encountered before. Now what they will do, they will simply follow the natural language prompt. Natural language means English language. So just in English language you give the prompt to it and then it will pick up those items they have never encountered before. Now the fourth thing is one neural network. Now unlike prior approaches, Helix uses a single set of neural network weights to learn all behaviors, picking and placing items, using drawers and refrigerators, and cross-robot interaction without any task-specific fine-tuning. So now Helix uses single set of neural network weights now to learn all behaviors. Now there won't be any multiple neural networks. There would be just one set of neural networks to learn all behaviors such as picking and placing things, using drawers, refrigerators, and cross-robot interaction without any task specific fine tuning now for you don't have to fine tune for a specific task it will learn all behaviors number five is that it's commercial ready so now helix is the first vla that runs entirely on board embedded low power consumption gpus making it immediately ready for commercial deployment. This is that model which runs on low power consumption, means low power is needed and low power consumption GPUs on that it can run. So you don't need a very high power consumption GPUs. On low power consumption GPUs, it can run on it. It can run entirely on it, which makes it ready for commercial deployment. So here, if you see here, a person is bringing groceries in the paper bag and these robots are equipped with Helix. Now the person is like taking out some items from the paper bag and these items are those items which have not seen before by the robots. The robots have not seen it before. So you can see here, these are some items which are given to the two robots and now they have to keep it now they have to keep it according to it now now let's see whether they do it or not so now they're like moving their hands fully you can see it autonomously they're moving their hands 
and then the other one is trying to open the refrigerator and then they're trying to put the stuff in it so let's see if they actually put the stuff in it or not it looks like it's putting the egg the other is putting something else in the drawer and you can see here so and then it's trying to figure out what to do whether to put it or not okay let's see now this one is giving to the other robot the stuff like to put it in the fridge okay so it looks like those robots are working together so they're giving the item that you put it in the fridge and then you see the other one now the first robot has completed the task and now the other robot is giving it the other stuff to put it in the drawer so the second robot is giving it to the first robot so you can see they are working together so either if the first robot has to give to the another robot to put it in the fridge so they are giving it to the hands so that you can put it in the fridge and the second robot is giving some stuff to the first robot so that the first robot can put it in the drawer and like that they are trying to complete a task and these items are those grocery items which the robot have never ever seen before so let's see okay so it's also so now the apple is the last item and the robot is figuring out where to put it so where to put the apple so now they're putting it in the stuff and now this would be i think it would be kept in the drawer or maybe yeah they put it on the basket and on the side they didn't put it in the drawer and the they don't put it in the fridge so they just put it on the like on the table the apple so now these two robots have completed the task so there is a new scaling for humanoid robots so the home presents robotics greatest challenge because in home there are many things that the robot have never seen before like unlike controlled industrial setting because sometimes in industrial setting it is controlled means those stuff are put there which the robot knows already but the home are filled with those objects like countless objects such as delicate glassware crumpled clothing scattered toys each with unpredictable shapes sizes colors and textures so this are those stuff which the robot have never seen before and for robots to be useful in households they will need to be capable of generating intelligent new behaviors on demand especially for objects they've never seen before i mean some stuff are very very fragile and they're very delicate so the robot need to be very very careful so especially for those stuff they have never seen before and they say that the current state of robotics will not scale to the home without a step change so that's why they're teaching robots even a single new behavior currently requires substantial human effort means either hours of phd level expert manual programming or thousands of demonstration means they're saying how the current state of robotics if you do not add helix to it either you need to do the manual programming for hours of phd level expert manual programming either you have to do it to the robots or you have to do thousands of demonstrations both are very expensive when we consider how vast the problem of the home truly is because the home it has a lot of unidentified objects so there are the new scaling laws you can see the scaling behaviors without training if you see the traditional approach new behavior scale with phd hours so you can see here that it is time consuming and the number of tasks is less whereas for the fleet model and the new behaviors which scale with collected data means you train it with the collected data the new behaviors with the time it is time consuming but the number of tasks is more but if you add helix to it means new behaviors in which you scale with it no programming or demonstration means no programming has been done like no prior programming or demonstration has been done but you add helix to it which is a model in which there is division the and there is the language and there is the thing so that what it will do the time taken would be less and number of tasks would be more so this is the helix if the robots you give helix to it like if you add the helix model to it then you see the time taken is less and the number of tasks doing it's more so you just talk to robots in natural language instead of giving thousands or hundreds of demonstration you can just talk to robots in natural language means in english language and the key problem is that how do we extract all this common sense knowledge from vlms and translate it into generalizable robot control that's why helix is there to bridge this gap in helix there is a system one system two vla means vision language action for whole upper body control so now this is a system one system two model for a hybrid dexterous control of the entire humanoid upper body now there are two systems there's system one and system two now system two which is called s2 now this is an internet 
pre-trained VLM, vision language model, which is operating at 7 to 9 hertz for scene understanding and language comprehension, which enables broad generalization across objects and context. So system two is an internet pre-trained VLM. It's a model which is operating at 7 to 9 hertz. Now this system two will understand the scene and also understand the language that what type of language the person is saying and try to understand the language in which it enables the broad generalization across objects and context so that it can understand the objects and the context regarding it and system one is a fast reactive visual motor policy that translates the latent semantic representations which is produced by s2 into precise continuous robot actions at 200 hertz now system two will tell system one to do this task. Now system one is the one which is the action thing. Now it will tell the robot to do this action and at this hertz means 200 hertz, the robot actions it will do. So here you can see there's a system two which will try to understand and then it will tell to system one and then robot will do the action. So this is the architecture behind Helix. So in that there are two systems in it. And let me uh, tell you one more thing. Don't think that system one and system two that both combined is Helix. So that Helix the whole system one and system two combined is in one robot and another Helix is in another robot. It's like that. It's not that there's system one in one robot and system two in another robot. It's that the system one and system two that's the architecture which they are explaining about Helix. Means inside Helix there's system one and system two and what it does and regarding the model and training details if you see here for the data a high quality multi robot and multi operator data set was collected for 500 hours in total this was the data which was done and it also processes the vlm which is there in the robot it also processes some segmented means like some clipped video clips from the onboard robot cameras which is prompted with what instruction would you have given the robot to get the action seen in this video so you can see it's doing that and the architecture i already told you about that about s1 and s2 so here there were not multiple neural networks like you see the complex neural network it was just a single training state and a single set of neural network which weighs without separate action heads or per task fine tuning stages there is a zero shot multi robot collaboration now for example if there is a natural language prompt like hand the bag of cookies to the robot on your right or receive the bag of cookies from the robot on your left and place it in the open drawer means you will tell it to the robot in a natural language and then the robot will do it and then here how to pick up the thing for example pick up the box of curry or pick up the squishy frog or for example there were some more stuff like pick up the glass pick up the kids shoe and like that stuff so that it like it understands what they are trying to say or what the person is trying to say and then it does that thing so if you like this video do like subscribe and do comment below whether you like this robot or not or whether this robot is actually intelligent or not so that's all for my side catch you next time bye bye